the salt of the earth by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson the salt of the earth what a meaningful phrase from the lips of the savior and one that conveys a sense of the need of a substance saline this pestilent sphere to refresh and refine and a helpful and happy condition secure by making it pure as the ocean is pure in all the nomenclature known to the race in all appellations of people or place was ever a name so befitting so true of those who are seeking the wrong to undo with naught of the pharisees arrogant air their badge of discipleship humbly who wear do beings forsooth fashioned out of the mould so secretly strangely those elements hold that may be developed in goodness and grace to shine in demeanour in form and in face till they by renewal of heavenly birth shall merit their title the salt of the earth to the landsman at home or the sailor at sea with nausea scurvy or canker may be tis never in language to overexalt the potent preservative virtue of salt a crystal commodity wholesome and good a cure for disease and a savour for food ah the beasts of the wood and the fowls of the air know all of the need of this condiment rare know well where the springs and the salt licks abound where streams salinaceous flow out of the ground and their cravings appease by sipping the brine with more than the relish of topers at wine our wants may be legion our needs are but few and every known ill hath its remedy true tis ours to discover and give to mankind of hidden essentials the best that we find tis ours to eradicate error and sin and help to make better the place we are in if ever this world from corruption is free and righteousness reign in the kingdom to be like salt in its simple and soluble way infusing malodor preventing decay so human endeavour in action sublime must never relax till the finale of time to thousands discouraged this comforting truth appeals like the promise of infinite youth to know as they labour like bees in the hive yet do little more than keep goodness alive to know that the master credits their worth as blessed disciples the salt of the earth end of poem this recording is in the public domain not gone by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by nemo they are not gone whose lives and beauty so unfolding have left their own sweet impress everywhere like flowers while we linger in beholding diffusing fragrance on the summer air they are not gone for grace and goodness cannot perish but must develop in immortal bloom the viewless soul the real self we love and cherish shall live and flourish still beyond the tomb they are not gone though lost to observation and dispossessed of those dear forms of clay though dust and ashes speak of desolation the spirit presence this is ours alway and a poem this recording is in the public domain. Let us give thanks by Hattie Howard, recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude. If we have lived another year and counting friends by regiments who share our love and confidence, find no more broken ranks. For this, let us give thanks if since the last thanksgiving time have we been blessed with strength and health and added to our honest wealth nor lost by broken banks for this would we give thanks if through adversity we trod yet with serene and smiling face and trusted more to saving grace than charlatans and cranks for this 
let us give thanks. If we have somehow worried through the ups and downs along life's track, and still undaunted, can look back and smile at fortune's pranks. For this, would we give thanks? If every page in our account with God and man is fairly writ, we care not who examined it with no suspicious blanks. For this, let us give thanks. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Upon my smile Let none pass compliment if It but gleam like an enchanting ray Of sunshine Caught from some sweet summer day An atmosphere of rose and jasmine scent And breath of honeysuckles redolent When with the birds that sing their lives away in harmony the treetops bend and sway and all the world with joy is eloquent but in that day of gloom when sky severe portend the tempest gathering overhead if by my face some token shall appear inspiring hope dispelling darksome dread oh be the rapture mine that it be said, her smile is like the rainbow, full of cheer. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Rainy Day by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen Oh, what a blessed interval a rainy day may be! No lightning flash nor tempest roar, but one incessant, steady pour of dripping melody. When from their sheltering retreat go not with voluntary feet the storm beleaguered family, nor bird nor animal. When business takes a little lull and gives the merchant man a chance to seek domestic scenes, to interview the magazines, convoke his growing clan, the boys and girls almost unknown, and get acquainted with his own, as well the household budget scan, or write a canticle. When farmer John ransacks the barn, hunts up the harness old, nigh twenty years since it was new, puts in an extra thong or two, and hopes the thing will hold without that missing martingale, that bothered Dobbin, head and tail, he, gentle equine, safe, controlled, but by a twist of yarn, when busy fingers may provide a savory repast to whet the languid appetite and give to eating a delight unknown since seasons past, avaunt ill cookery, whose ranks develop dull dyspeptic cranks who, forced to diet or to fast, ergo have dined and died. It is a day of rummaging, the closets to explore, to take down from the dusty shelves the books that never read themselves, and turning pages or discover therein safely laid the bills forgot and never paid. Somehow that of the corner store such dunning memories bring, it gives a chance to liquidate epistolary debts, to write in humble penitence, acknowledging the negligence, the sin that so besets, and cheer the hearts that hold us dear, who've known and loved us many a year, back to the days of pantalettes and swinging on the gate. It gives occasion to repair unlucky circumstance, to intercept the ragged ends, and for arrears to make amends, by mending hose and pants, the romping young ones to redress without those signs of holiness, that so bespeak the mendicants by every rip and tear. It is a time to gather round the old piano grand, its dulcet harmonies unstirred, since Lucy sang so like a bird, and played with graceful hand, like Lucy's voice in pathos sweet repeating softly, Shall we meet? Is only in the heavenly land such clear soprano sound? It is a time for happy chat, in circle tate to tate, discuss the doings of the day, the club, the sermon, 
or the play affairs of church and state fond reminiscence to explore the pleasant episodes of yore and so till raindrops all abate as erst on ararat ah yes a rainy day may be a blessed interval a little halt for introspect a little moment to reflect on life's discrepancy our puny stint so poorly done the larger duty scarce begun and so may conscience culpable suggest a remedy end of poem this recording is in the public domain the subway by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by kathleen oh who in creation would fail to descend that wonderful hole in the ground that feeling its way like a hypocrite friend in sinuous fashion seems never to end while thunder and lightning abound oh who in creation would dare to go down that great subterranean hole the tunnel the terror the talk of the town that gives to the city a mighty renown and a shaking as never before a serpent a spider its mouth at the top where the flies are all buzzing about down into its maw where the populace drop who never know where they are going to stop or whether they'll ever get out why is it with millions of acres on trod where never the ploughshare hath been that man must needs burrow miles under the sod as if to get farther and farther from god and deeper and deeper in sin o oh, dagos and diggers who can't understand that the planet you'll never get through why there is three times as much water as land and but for the least little seam in the sand your life is worth less than a sou come up out of erebus into the day there's plenty of room overhead no boring or blasting of rocks in the way no stratum of sticky impervious clay all vacuous vapor instead oh give us a transit a tube or an l not leagues from the surface below as if we were never in heaven to dwell as if we were all being fired to well the place where we don't want to go end of poem this recording is in the public domain the apple tree by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by kathleen has ever a tree from the earth upsprung around whose body have children clung whose bounteous branches the birds among have pecked the fruit and chirped and sung was ever a tree or shall there be so hardy so sturdy so good to see so welcome a boon to the family like the pride of the farmer the apple tree how he loves to be digging about its root or grafting the bud in the tender shoot the daintiest palate that he may suit with the fairest and finest selected fruit how he boasts of his sweetings so big for size his delicate greenings made for pies his golden pippins that take the prize the astrachans tempting that tell no lies how he learns of the squirrel a thing or two that the wise little rodents always knew and never forget or fail to do of laying up store for the winter through so he hollows a space in the mellow ground where leaves for lining and straw abound and well remembers his apple mound when a day of scarcity comes around by many a token may we suppose that the knowledge apple no longer grows that broke up adam and eve's repose and set the fashion of fig-leaf clothes the story simple and terse and crude but still with a morsel of truth imbued for of trees and trees by the multitude are some that are evil and some that are good the more i muse on those stories old the more philosophy they unfold of husbands docile and women bold and satan's purposes manifold ah many a couple hath their fair with that mistaken and misfit air that the world and all are ready to swear to a mighty unappily mated pair the apple's an old-fashioned tree i know all gnarled and bored by the curculio and loves to stand in a zigzag row and doesn't make half so much of a show as the lovely almond that blooms like a ball and spreads out wide like a pink parasol set on its stem by the garden wall but i love the apple tree after all a little more cider sings the bard and who this juiciness would discard though holding the apple in high regard must be like the cider itself very hard for the spirit within it as all must know is utterly harmless 
unless we go like the fool in his folly and overflow by drinking a couple of barrels or so what of that apple beyond the seas fruit of the famed hesperides but dust and ashes compared to these that grow on columbia's apple trees and i sigh for the apples of years agone for rambo street like the morning dawn for russets brown with their jackets on and aromatic as cinnamon oh the peach and the cherry may have their place and the pear is fine in its stately grace the plum belongs to a puckier race and maketh awry the mouth and face but i long to roam in the orchard free the dear old orchard that used to be and gather the beauties that drop for me from the bending boughs of the apple tree end of poem this recording is in the public domain two roses by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by nemo i've a friend beyond the ocean so regardful so sincere and he sends me in a letter such a pretty souvenir it is crushed to death and withered out of shape and very flat but its pure delicious odor is the richer for all that tis a rose from honolulu and it bears the tropic brand sandwiched in this friendly missive from that far-off flower land it shall mingle potpourri with a sense i love and keep some of them so very precious that remembrance makes me weep while i dream i hear the music that of happiness foretells like the flourishing of trumpets and the sound of marriage bells there's a rose upon the prairie chosen his by happy fate he shall gather when he cometh sailing through the golden gate mine a public posy growing somewhere by the garden wall might have gone to any stranger may have been admired by all but the rose in beauty blushing tenderly and sweetly grown in the home and its affections blooms for him and him alone speed the voyager returning his shall be a welcome warm with a rose of minnesota gently resting on his arm love embraces in his kingdom earth and sea and sky and air hail columbia hail hawaii it is heaven everywhere and a poem this recording is in the public domain the taxidermist by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by nemo from other men he stands apart wrapped in sublimity of thought where futile fancies enter not with star-like purpose pressing on where agassiz and audubon labored and sped that noble art yet in its pristine dawn something to conquer to achieve makes life well worth the struggle hard its petty ills to disregard and high endeavor day by day with this incentive that he may somehow mankind the richer leave when he has passed away forest and field he treads alone finding companionship in birds in reptiles rodents yea in herds of drowsy cattle fat and sleek for these to him a language speak to common multitudes unknown as tones of classic greek unthinking creatures and untaught they to his nature answer back something his fellow mortals lack and oft deduce from him the sigh that they unnoticed soon must die leaving of their existence not to be remembered by man may aspire though in the slow may dream of glory strive for fame 
thirst for the prestige of a name. And shall these friends that so invite the study of the erudite, ever as he beholds them now, perish like sparks of light? Nay, tis his purpose and design to keep them, not like mummies old, papyrus mantled, fold on fold, but elephant or dove or swan its native hue in raiment on an effigy of plumage fine or skin its native tawn. What God hath wrought this time shall tell, and thus endowment rich and vast be rescued from the buried past, and rare relics that never fade be in the mannequin portrayed till taxidermy witness well the debt to science paid lo one appeareth unforetold this recreator yea of men making him feel as born again who looketh up with reverent eyes through wonders that his soul surprise that great creator to behold all powerful all wise and a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Epithalamium by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. One, whom God hath joined. Ah, this sententious phrase, a meaning deeper than the sea conveys, and of a sweet and solemn service tells, with the rich resonance of wedding bells. It speaks of vows and obligations given, as if amid the harmony of heaven, while seraph lips approving seem to say, Love, honor, and obey. 2. Is Hymen, then, ambassador divine, his mission matrimonial and benign, the heart to counsel, ardor to incite, convert the nun, rebuke the Aramite, as if were this his mandate from the throne, it is not good for them to be alone. Behold the land, its fruitage and its flowers, not mine and thine, but ours. 3. Did not great Paul aver in lucid spell that they of conjugal intent do well, but hinted at a better state, tis one, with which two loving souls have naught to do, for in well-doing, being quite content, be there another state more excellent, to which the celibate doth fain repair, they neither know nor care. 4. And does the Lord of all become high priest, and with his presence grace the wedding feast, then must the whole celestial throng draw nigh, for nuptials there are none beyond the sky. So is the union sanctified and blessed, for love is host and love is welcome guest. So may the joyous bridal season be like that of Galilee. 5. Sweet Mary, of the blessed name so dear to all the loving Saviour who revere, Madonna-like, be thou in every grace that shall adorn thee in exalted place and thine the happy privilege to prove the depth, the tenderness of woman's love, so shall the heart that honors thee today bow down to thee all way. 6. O radiant June, in wealth of light and air, with leaf and bud and blossom everywhere, let all bright tokens affluent combine, and round the bridal pair in splendor shine, let sweethearts coy and lovers fond and true on this glad day their tender vows renew and all in wedlock's bond rejoice as they whom god hath joined for a end of poem this recording is in the public domain a foul affair by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by betty b a foul affair i hope i'm not too orthodox to give a joke away that took me like the chicken pox and left a debt to pay let argument ignore the cost if it be dear or cheap and only claim that naught be lost when it's too good to keep the proverb says all flesh is grass 
but this i do deny because of that which came to pass but not to pass me by a body weighing by the pound inside of half a score in case and cordage safely bound was landed at my door what could it be for friends are slack and give i rather trow when they are sure of getting back as much as they bestow my hair at thought of dark design or dynamitish fate stood up like quills of porcupine but more than twice as straight anon i mused on something rare like duck or terrapin but dream not of the parcel there might be a pullet in a mighty jerk the string that broke the foul affair revealed the victim of a cruel choke its neck completely peeled the biped in its paper cough thin cramped and plump and neat had scratched its very toenails off in making both ends meet the only part i always ate that never made me ill had gone away decapitate and carried off the bill i pondered o'er the sacrifice the merry thought the wings on giblet gravy salad nice and chicken pious things in heat of fahrenheit degree two hundred twelve or more where its grandsire defying me had crowed the year before i thrust it with a hope forlorn i knew what toughness meant and sighed that ever i was born to die of roasting scent but presto what denouement grand of cookery sublime twas done as by the second hand the drumsticks beating time and now the moral he who buys will comprehend its worth look not so much to weight and size as to the date of birth in fowls there is a difference the good die young they say and for the death of innocence to make us meet we pray end of poem this recording is in the public domain Holiday Home by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Fraser Prescott Of all the sweet visions that come unto me, Of happy refreshment by land or by sea, Like oases wherein life's desert I roam, Is nothing so pleasant as holiday home. I climb to the top of the highest of hills, and look to the west with affectionate thrills, and fancy I stand by the emerald side of charming Geneva, like Switzerland's pride. In distant perspective unruffled it lies, except for the packet that paddles and plies, and puffing its way like a pioneer makes, its daily go round o'er this pearl of the lakes untroubled except for the urchins that come from many a haunt that is never a home instinctive as ducklings to swim and to wade scarce knowing aforetime why water was made all placid except for the dip of the oar of the skiff or the barge striking out from the shore while merry excursionists shout till the gale reverberates laughter through rigging and sail. How it scallops its basin and shimmers and shines, like a salver of silver encompassed with vines, in crystal illusion reflecting the skies, and the mountain that seems from its bosom to rise. There stands a great house on a summit so high, like an airy of safety and roofed by the sky. And I think of the rest and the comfort up there, To sleep and to breathe that imperial air. Oh, the charm of the glen and the stream and the wood Can never be written nor be understood, Except by the weary and languid who come To bask in the quiet of holiday home. From prison-like cellars, unwholesome and drear, from attic and alley, from labor severe. For the poor and the famished doth kindness prepare, a world of diversion and excellent fare. 
To swing in the hammock, to sport in the breeze, To lie in the shade of magnificent trees, Oh, this is like quaffing from luxury's bowl The life-giving essence for body and soul. Nor distance nor time shall efface from the mind The influence gentle, the ministry kind. While gratitude fondly enhallows the thought Of a home and a holiday never forgot. Ah, one is remembered of saintliest men, To lovely Geneva who comes not again, Who left a sweet impress wherever he trod, Humanity's helper, companion of God. In the hearts of the many there sheltered and fed, As unto a hospice by providence led, Does often a thought like a sunbeam intrude Of the bounty so free and the donor so good. Who of their abundance have cheerfully given, Wherewith to develop an embryo heaven, To brighten conditions too hard and too sad, And make the unhappy contented and glad? Be blessedness theirs, who like knights of renown, Thus scatter such largesse o'er country and town, Their monument building in many a dome, like healthful and beautiful holiday home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rutha by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Rutha, the days are long and lonely, the weary eve comes on and the nights are filled with dreaming of one beloved and gone i reach out in the darkness and clasp but empty air for ruth the dear has vanished i wonder wonder where yet must it be her nature so lovely pure and true so nearly like the angels is she an angel too the cottage is dismantled of all that made it bright beyond its silent portal no love nor life nor light where are the hopes I cherished, the joys that once I knew, the dreams, the aspirations, all, all are perished too. Yes, love's dear chain is broken, from shore to shore I roam, no comfort, no companion, no happiness, no home. Oh, could I but enfold her unto my heart once more, if aught could e'er restore me, my darling, as before, if God would only tell me such myriads above why he must needs have taken the one i love to love if god would only tell me why multitudes are left unhappy and unlovely and i am thus bereft if o oh, my soul be silent and some day thou shalt see through mystery and shadow and know why it must be to every cry of anguish from every heart distressed can be no other answer then this God knoweth best. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Student Gone by Hattie Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Student Gone. So soon he fell, the world will never know what possibilities within him lay what hopes irradiated his young life with high ambition and with ardor rife but ah the speedy summons came and so he passed away so soon he fell there lie unfinished plans by others misapplied misunderstood and doors are barred that wait the master key that wait his magic open sesame to that assertive power that commands the multitude too soon he fell was he not born to prove what manhood and integrity might be how one from all base elements apart might walk serene in purity of heart his face the bright transparency of love and sympathy the student ranks are closed there is no gap of other brave aspirants is no dearth prowess fidelity and truth go on and few shall miss or mourn the student gone 
reposing in the all-protecting lap of mother earth too soon o oh god was it thy will that one of such endeavour and of noble mien enwrapped with living should thus early go from all he loved and all who loved him so mid life's activities no longer known no longer seen oh not for i should agonizing lips quiver with questionings they dare not frame though in the dark penumbra of despair seemeth no light nor comfort anywhere all things enshadowed as in dense eclipse no more the same could we but know in that elysian lore of happy exercise still going on could we but know of glorious heights attained of his reward of mysteries explained ah but to know were to lament no more the student gone end of poem this recording is in the public domain the tourist by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by eva davis lo carpet bag and bagger occupy the land and prove the touring season actively begun his personnel and purpose can none misunderstand for each upon his frontlet bears his honest brand the foolish one by caravan and car from country and from town a great grasshopper army fell foraging the land like bumblebees that know not where to settle down impossible it is to curb or scare or drown the tourist band with guidebook camera with rod and gun to shoot to lure the deer the hare the bird the speckled trout the pauper or the prince unbidden they salute and everywhere their royal right dare none dispute to roam about from dark immuring walls and dingy ways of trade from high society's luxurious stately homes from lounging places by the park or promenade from rural dwellings canopied in sylvan shade the tourist comes to every mountain peak within the antipodes to sweet sequestered spots no other mortal knows to every island fair and girt by sunny seas to forest centres unexplored by birds or bees the tourist goes for summer's fingers all the land have richly dressed resplendent in regalia of scent and bloom and stirred in every heart the spirit of unrest like that of untamed fledglings in the parent nest for ampler room what is it prompts the roving mania is it love of wild adventure fanciful unique and odd is it to be in fashion and to others prove one social standing that impels the madness of the tramp abroad the question hangs unanswered like an unwise prayer importunate but powerless response to bring go ask the voyagers the rovers everywhere they only say it is their rest time outing their vacationing so is the world's eccentric round of joy complete when happy tourist traveller no more to roam his fascinating thrilling story shall repeat to impecunious luckless multitudes who greet the tourist home end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Antiquarian by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Millions have been and passed from view, benignity who never knew, no aspiration theirs nor aim, existence soulless as the clay. From whence they sprang, what right have they to eulogy or fame? So multitudes have been forgot, but drones or dunces good for naught like clinging parasites or burrs taking from others all they dared yet little they for others cared except as pilferers not so with that majestic man the all-around antiquarian no model his nor parallel from selfishness inviolate are his achievements good and great and thus shall ages tell 
a love for the antiquities his honest hold his birthright is and things unheard of or unread defaced by moth or rust or mold to him are treasures more than gold ay than his daily bread at neither ghost nor ghoul aghast he echoes voices of the past and tones like melancholy knells of years departed to his ear are sweeter than of kindred dear sweeter than florimel's he delves through centuries of dust to resurrect some unknown bust a torso or a goddess whole maybe like venus minus arms haply to find those missing charms but not the lost lost soul he dotes on aborigines who lived in caves and hollow trees and barters for their trinkets rare exchanging with those dusky breeds for arrowheads and shells and beads a scalp-lock of his hair had he been born thus he laments along with other great events coeval say with noah's flood a proud relationship to trace with hittites or with any race of blue archaic blood much he adores that pilgrim flock the same that split old plymouth rock their bass psalm when they tried to sing devoid of metre sense and tune who but a puritanic loon could have devised the thing he revels in a pedigree the sprouting of a noble tree way back in prehistoric times and for the family record true of scions all that ever grew would give a billion dimes there is a language fossils speak tis not like latin much less greek but quite as dead and antiquate its silent syllables and cold but ah what meanings they unfold what histories relate the earthquake is his best ally it shows up things he cannot buy and gives him raw material for making mastodons and such enough to beat that ancient dutch republic's rise and fall a piece of bone can never lie a rib a femur or a thigh is but a dislocated sign of something hybrid half and half betwixt a crocodile and a calf maybe a porcupine the stately antiquarium is his emporium his home he wonders if when he is gone will people look with mournful pride on him done up and classified and the right label on he dreams of an emblazoned page the calendar of every age down from creation's primal dawn with archetypes of spears and bones and tons of undeciphered stones its illustrations drawn labor a blessing not a curse his hunting ground the universe so much the more his nature craves to sound the fathoms of the sea what mighty wonders there must be down in those hidden caves so toils this dauntless man alert amid the ruins and the dirt that other men to endless day themselves uplifted from the clod may see and learn and know that god is greater far than they and thus of mighty ken and plan the all-around antiquarian pursues his happy ministry and on the world's progressive track advances always going back back to antiquity end of poem this recording is in the public domain poor housekeeping by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by betty b poor housekeeping if there is one gift that i prize above others that tinges with brightness whatever i do and gives to the sombre a roseate hue tis a legacy mine from the nicest of mothers who haply the beauty of housewifery knew and taught me her neatness and diligence too so is my discomfort a house in disorder the service uncleanly the linen disdained the children like infantry rude and untrained the portiers dusty and frayed at the border by lavish expenses the pocket-book drained and miseries numberless never explained i dream not of pleasure in visions untidy a wrapper all holy a buttonless shoe a slatternly matron with nothing to do and all the ill luck charged to ominous friday can never compare with the ills that ensue on wretched housekeeping and cookery too there's many a husband a patient breadwinner gets up from the table with look of despair and something akin to the growl of a bear not the saint he might be but a querulous sinner when driven to fasting but not unto prayer till epitaph thus 
indigestible fare there's many a child from the roof tree diurnal a scene of distraction or dullness severe with the longing of youth for diversion and cheer that comes like the springtime refreshing and vernal goes out on a ruinous reckless career returning if ever not many a year o negligent female imperfect housekeeper though faultless in figure and charming of face in ruffles of ribbon and trailings of lace usurping the part of a common street sweeper you never can pose as a type of your race in frowsy appearance mid things out of place o fashion-bred damsel with folly a flutter until you have learned how to manage a broom if never you know how to tidy a room manipulate bread or decide about butter the duties of matron how dare you assume or ever be bribed to a sensible groom i covet no part with that army of shirkers all down at the heels in their slippery tread who hunt for the rolling pin under the bed who look with disdain on intelligent workers and take to the club or the circus instead of mending a stocking or laying the spread oh i dream of a system of perfect housekeeping where mistress and helper together compete in excellent management quiet and neat and though in the bosom of earth i am sleeping shall somebody live to whom life will be sweet and home an ideal idyllic retreat end of poem this recording is in the public domain Going to Tobog by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T Into my disappointment cup the snowflakes fell and blocked the road And so I thought I'd finish up the latest style of Christmas ode When she, the charming little lass, with eyes as bright as isn't before a line my pen had wrought in strange attire came bounding in as if she had with bruno fought and robbed him of his shaggy skin she came to me robed cap a pie in her bewitching blanket suit in moccasin and toggery all ready for that icy shoot and asked me if i thought she'd do i shake with love of mischief true for what a polar bear why yes no no said she with half a pout why one would think so by your dress say does your mother know you're out no i'm not out she said and sighed because the storm so wildly raged but for the first delightful ride for half a year i've been engaged engaged to what an eskimo to ride a glacier or a flow why don't you know her colour glowed in expectation all agog the reason why i'm glad it snowed because i'm going to tobog end of poem this recording is in the public domain passe le temps by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by eva davis so that's the way you pass your time indeed your charming frank confession betrays no sort of heinous crime but marks a wonderful digression from puritanic views less bold that we were early taught to hold passer le temps of course implies a little cycle of flirtations wherein the actors never rise to sober serious relations but play just for amusement's sake a harmless game of give and take while moments pass on pinions fleet and youth and beauty efflorescence the joy that finds itself complete in honeyed words and soft caresses alas an index seems to be of perilous inconstancy it may be with disdainful smile you greet this comment from a stranger your pleasure pass pursuing while a siren voice discounts the danger until some day in sadder rhyme you rue your mode of passing time end of poem this recording is in the public domain the torpedo by hattie howard 
Read for LibriVox.org by Fraser Prescott. Valiant sons of the sea, all the vast deep your home holds no terror so dread as this novel and unseen foe lurking under the foam of some dangerous channel as the torpedo, the scourge of ships. Through the rigging may roar Aeolus's thousand gales, yet the mariner's heart shrinketh not from the howling blast, though with battle-rent sails, flames and carnage around him, cowardice shall never pale his lips. But when powers concealed, threatening with death the crew, pave each eddy below, even the bravest are chilled with fear, lest yon wizard in blue, who their progress is spying, touch but the key with his fingertips. Lo, with thunderous boom, towers a column bright, and the vessel is gone. In that ocean of blinding spray sink her turrets from sight, by thy potency broken, O oh, irresistible scourge of ships. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Margaret by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Fraser Prescott I saw her for a moment. Her presence haunts me yet. In oft-recurring visions of grace and gladness met that marked the sweet demeanor of dainty Margaret. Like gossamer her robe was around her lightly drawn a filmy summer garment that fairy maidens don to make them look like angels croqueting on the lawn. The mallet sport became her in hue of exercise that tinged her cheek with roses and dancing in her eyes were pantomime suggestions of having won a prize. No more to me a stranger is she who occupies a place in all my musings and brings in tender guise. A thought of one so like her long years in paradise. Dear Margaret, that pearl name is thine, and may it be the synonym of goodness, of truth and purity, and all ennobling graces exemplified in thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Christmas Bells by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Christmas Bells Ring out, O bells, in joyful chime, Again we hail the Christmas time, In melting mellow atmosphere, The crown and glory of the year, When bitterness, distrust, and awe Dissolve like ice in winter's thaw, Beneath the genial touches of Amenity, goodwill, and love, When flowers of affection grow, like edelweiss mid alpine snow in lives severe and beauteous unused to warmth or tenderness let goodness grace and gratitude revive in music's interlude and pay in notes till time shall cease proclaim the blessed reign of peace ring christmas bells for at the sound sweet memories of him abound who laid aside a diadem to be the babe of bethlehem end of poem this recording is in the public domain. By the Sea by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo I am longing to dwell by the sea And dip in the surf every day And, height of subaqueous glee, With the sharks and the porpoises play to novelty ever inclined, 
instead of a calm evening sail twould suit my adventurous mind to ride on the back of a whale i want to disport on the rocks like a mythical mermaiden bell and comb up my watery locks then dive to my cavernous cell i want to discover what lent such terror to all timid folks that serpent whose mystery tends to make one believe it a hoax they say he's been captured at last the news is too good to be true he's slippery cunning and fast and likes notoriety too once had i such longings to be a sailor those wishes are o'er but ever in dreams of the sea my horoscope rest on the shore oh give me a home by the sea a cottage a cabin a tent existence should ecstasy be till summer were joyfully spent and a poem this recording is in the public domain a song by hetty howard read for LibriVox.org by sonia a song oh sing me a merry song my heart is sad to-night the day has been so drear and long the world has gone awry and wrong discouragements around me throng and gloom surpassing night oh sing again the song for me my mother used to sing when i a child beside her knee looked up for her sweet sympathy nor ever thought how i might be her little hindering thing oh sing as eventide draws near the old-time lullabies grandmother sang forever dear though in her grave this many a year she lies who read her title clear to mansions in the skies oh sing till all perplexing care has vanished with the day and angels ever bright and fair come down the melody to share and on their pinions lightly bear my happy soul away end of poem this recording is in the public domain is it april by hattie howard recorded for librivox.org by jude no this is january dear the almanac's untrue for roaring boreas tis clear in sleet and snow and atmosphere will be the monarch of the year and terror too is it a blessing in disguise of course things always are but arctic blasts with ardent skies somehow do not quite harmonize that try to cheat by weather lies the calendar old janus must be double-faced he promised long ago the maple syrup not to taste nor steal the roses from the waist of one a damsel fair and chaste as april snow o oh, winter of our discontent your reign was for a day behold a scene of wonderment a thousand tongues are eloquent for spring in bud and bloom and scent is on the way End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Christmas Tide by Hattie Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Christmas Tide. Let working clothes be laid aside, and industry in festal garb arrayed. Let busy brain and hand from toil and trade relax at Christmas Tide as moments pass by dial so let gifts go round the happy circle where in giving and receiving each may share and mutual kindness show the meaning deep like mystery that lies in holly bough or mistletoe may thousands never fathom yet who know and hail the christmas tree so strong a hold on human thought has this glad day that seasons all the year where the rich flavoring of hearty cheer it ne'er shall be forgot it is the milestone on life's road where we may lay our burdens down 
and take a look at souvenirs for love's dear sake so prettily bestowed upon its shining tablet we may write if like the good samaritan indeed a record that the angel band shall read with impulse of delight and this is why on christmas morn the world should smile and wear its brightest glow because some nineteen hundred years ago a little child was born end of poem this recording is in the public domain january eighteen eighty five by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by kathleen these winter days are passing fair as if a breath of spring had permeated all the air and touched each living thing with thankfulness for such a boon discounting with a scoff the almanac's report that june is yet a long way off we quarrel with the calendar for may has been misplaced and doubt the tale oracular of janus double faced for this erythral mildness looks toward shadowy delights of roseate bowers of cosy nooks of coming thermal nights let robes diaphanous succeed dense garments made of fur and overcoats maintain the lead among the things that were the wisely rented sealskin sack by many a dame possessed be quickly relegated back to its moth-haunted chest while every portly alderman in linen suit arrayed manipulates the palm-leaf fan and seeks the cooling shade and he perspires who not in vain suggests his funny squibs by poking his unwelcome cane in other people's ribs who dares to fling opprobrium on january now as to a potentate we come with a reverential bow because it doth not yet appear that time hath ever seen the ruler of the inverted year in more benignant mien o boreas do not lie low that is if lie thou must upon our planet do not blow with fierce and sudden gust but come so gently tenderly as come thou surely wilt that we may have sweet dreams of thee beneath our crazy quilt end of poem this recording is in the public domain sweet peas by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by kathleen by helpful fingers taught to twine around its trellis grew a delicate and dainty vine the bursting bud its blossom sign inlaid with honeyed dew developing by every art to floriculture known from tares exempt and kept apart careful as if in some fond heart its legume germs were sown so thriving not for me alone its beauty and perfume ah no to rich perfection grown by flower mission loved and known in many a darkened room and once in strange and solemn place mid weeping uncontrolled upon the crushed and snowy lace i saw them scattered round a face all pallid still and cold oh some may choose as gaudy shows those saucy sprigs of pride the peony the red red rose but give to me the flower that grows petite and pansy-eyed thus meditation on sweet peas impels the ardent thought would maidens all were more like these with modesty that true heart sees tying the lover's knot end of poem this recording is in the public domain the summer house by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by nema midway upon the lawn it stands so picturesque and pretty upreared by patient artist hands admired of all the city the very arbor of my dream a covert cool and airy so leaf embowered as to seem the dwelling of a fairy it is the place to lie supine within a hammock swinging to watch the sunset red as wine to hear the cricket singing and while the insect world around is buzzing by the million no winged thing above the ground intrudes in this pavilion 
It is the place at day's decline to tell the old, old story behind the dark Madeira vine, behind the morning glory, to confiscate the rustic seat and barter stolen kisses, for honey must be twice as sweet in such a spot as this is. It is the haunt where one may get relief from petty trouble, may read the latest day's gazette about the Klondike bubble, how shanties rise like golden courts, where sheep wear glittering fleeces, how gold is picked up by the quartz, and all get rich as Croesus. Here, hid away from dust and heat, secure from rude intrusion, while willing lips the thought repeat, so grows the fond illusion, that happiness the product is of lazy, languid dozing, of soft midsummer reveries, half waking, half reposing. And here, in restful interlude, life's fallacies forgetting, its frailties, such a multitude, the fuming and the fretting. Amid the fragrance, dusk and dew, the happy soul at even may walk abroad and interview bright messengers from heaven. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Die in Autumn by Hattie Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America. The melody of autumn is the only tune I know, and I sing it over and over because it thrills me so. It stirs anew the happy wish so near to perfect bliss to live a little longer in a world like this the sound was never sweeter the voice so nearly mute as beauty dying loses her hold upon the lute and like the harmonies that touch and blend with those above forever must an echo wake the heart of love her robe of brown and coral and amber glistens through rare jewels of the morning the opals of the dew like royal fabrics worn beneath the tinselry of pearls or diamond dust by fashion strewn on sunny curls if i could wrap such garments in true artistic style about myself departing and wear as sweet a smile and be as guileless as the flowers my friends would never sigh twould reconcile them to my death to see me die and why should there be sorrow when dying is no more then twixt two bright apartments the opening of a door through which the freed and raptured soul from this a paradise may pass to that supremely fair beyond the skies oh twere not hard to finish when earth with tender grace prepares for her dear children so sweet a resting place and though in dissolution's throw the melody be riven the song abruptly ended here goes on in heaven end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Apple Blossoms by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis Of all the lovely blossoms that decorate the trees And shower down their petals with every breath of breeze There is nothing so sweet or fair to me As the delicate blooms of the apple tree a thousand shrubs and flowerets delicious pleasure bring the beautiful pomona must be the queen of spring and out of her flagon the peach and pear their chalices fill with essence rare oh is it any wonder devoid of blight or flaw the peerless blooms of eden our primal mother saw in redolent beauty before her placed so tempted fair eve the fruit to taste but woman's love of apples involving fearful price and adam's love for woman that cost him paradise by the labor of hands and sweat of brow have softened the curse to a blessing now if so those pink-eyed glories in fields and orchards gay develop luscious fruitage by horticulture's way then sweet is the heart of rich legumes shall luxury follow the apple blooms.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Without a Minister by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The congregation was devout, the minister inspired, their attitude to those without by every one admired, and all things so harmonious seemed, of no calamity we dreamed. But just in this quiescent state a little cloud arose, portentous of our certain fate, as everybody knows. Our pastor took it in his head, his resignation must be read. In every eye a teardrop stood, for we accepted it reluctantly, but nothing could make him recant one bit, and soon he left for distant parts, while we were left with broken hearts. And next the patriarch, who led for nearly three score years, our Sabbath school, its worthy head, rekindled all our fears by saying with a smile benign, since it's the fashion, I'll resign. And so he did, but promptly came forth one of good report. Our superintendent is his name, who tries to hold the fort with wisdom, tact, and rare good sense. In this, his first experience. The world looks on and says, how strange. They hang together so, these Baptists do, and never change, but right straight onward go, while other flocks are scattering all, and some have strayed beyond recall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Indian Summer by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Is it not our bounden duty, Harsh and bitter thoughts to quell? wild ambition schemes repel and to revel in the beauty of this indian summer spell bathing forest field and dell as with radiance immortelle none can paint like nature dying whose dissolving struggle lent wealth of hues so richly blent that through weary years of trying artist skill preeminent may not copy or invent such divine embellishment knights of old from castles riding scattered largess as they went which like mana heaven sent cheered the poverty abiding but when neath that low green tent passed the hand benevolent sad were they and indigent monarchs too have thus delighted giving on to courtiers free costly robes and tinselry and as royal guests invited them to sumptuous halls of glee banqueting in minstrelsy bacchus holding sovereignty then perchance in mood capricious stripped and scorned and turned away those who tasted for a day pleasures sweet and food delicious nor might any say them nay lest his head the forfeit pay who a king dared disobey but our own benignant giver almoner impartial true constantly doth gifts renew nor would fitfully deliver aught unto the chosen few but to all the wide world through who admire his wonders too never shall the heart be poor never languish in despair that such affluence may share for then this is nothing sure he hath said and will prepare in those realms of upper air glories infinitely fair and a poem this recording is in the public domain Autumn Time by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Like music heard in mellow chime The charm of her transforming time Upon my senses steals As softly as from sunny walls In day's decline their shadow falls 
across the sleeping fields. A fair, illumined book is nature's page whereon I look, while autumn turns the leaves, and many a thought of her designs between those rare resplendent lines my fancy interweaves. I dream of aborigines who must have copied from the trees the fashions of the day. Those gorgeous top knots for the head of yellow tufts and feathers red with beads and sinews gay. I wonder if the saints behold such pageantry of colors bold beyond the radiant sky. And if the tints of paradise are heightened by the strange device of making all things die. Yea, even so, for nature glows because of her expiring throes, as if around her tomb unmeet it were the look severe that designates a common bier enwreathed in deepest gloom. And so I meditate if aught can be so fair where death is not, if heaven's loveliness is born of struggle and decay, and but for funeral array, would it be beautiless? O oh, solemn, sad, sweet mystery, that earth's unrivaled brilliancy is but her splendid pall, that heaven were not what it is, but for that crown of tragedies, the sacrifice for all? So not a charm would Zion lose, were it bereft of sparkling hues and gilded lanes and lees. It would be bright, though not a flower, unclosed in its celestial bower, and void of jeweled trees. Yet, lily-like, one bloom I see, its name is his who died for me, whose matchless beauty shows perfection on its bleeding stem the blossom bud of Bethlehem, the resurrection rose. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Beauty of Nature by Hattie Howard Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude O oh, bud and leaf and blossom, how beautiful they are! than last year's vernal season tis lovelier by far this earth was never so enchanting nor half so bright before but so i've rhapsodized in springtime for forty years or more what luxury of colour on shrub and plant and vine from pansies richest purple to pink of eglantine from buttercups to jolly jump-ups with deep cerulean eyes responding to their modest surname in violet surprise sometimes i think the sunlight that gilds the emerald hills and makes aladdin dwellings of dingy domiciles is surplus beauty overflowing that heaven cannot hold the topaz glitter or the jacinth the glare of streets of gold in cedar hill the city of low green tents of sod i read the solemn record of those gone home to god while from their hallow dust the rising the fragrant lilies grow as if their life was all the sweeter for those who sleep below and so tis not in sadness I dwell upon the thought, when I am dead and buried, that I shall be forgot, because the germ of reproduction doth this poor body hold, perchance to add to nature's beauty, a rose above the mould. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. All the Rage by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen. A common wayside flower it grew, unhandsome and unnoticed too, except in depreciation that such an herb 
unreared by toil prolific cumberer of the soil defied extermination its gorgeous blooms were never stirred by honey-bee nor hummingbird in their corollas dipping but they from clover white and red delicious nectar drew instead in dainty rounds of sipping no place its own euphonious name within the catalogue might claim of any flora lover for in the scores of passers-by as yet no true artistic eye its beauty could discover the reaper with his sickle keen aimed at its crest of gold and green with spiteful stroke relentless and would have rooted from the ground the soledago blossom crowned but gaudy rank and scentless but everything must have its day and since some fickle devotee or myrmidon of fashion declares that this obnoxious weed from wild uncultivated seed shall be the ruling passion effusive schoolgirls dote on it whose frontispieces infinite that need no decoration are hid beneath its golden dust till many a fine symmetric bust is lost to admiration smart dudes and ladies men the few who wish they could be ladies too display a sprig of yellow conspicuous in their buttonhole to captivate a maiden soul or vex some other fellow and spinsters of uncertain age are clamouring now for all the rage to give a dash of colour to their complexions which appear to be the hue they hold so dear except a trifle duller that negligee blue stocking friend who never cared her time to spend on mysteries of the toilet now wears a sumptuous bouquet and shakes your hand a mile away for fear that you will spoil it delightful widows dressed in black complain with modest sighs they lack that coveted expression that sort of indian summer air which relics always ought to wear by general concession and so lugubrious folds of crape are crimped and twisted into shape with graceful heads of yellow that give a winsome toning down to sombre hat and sable gown in autumn tintings mellow alas we only hate the weed and think that it must be indeed the lady's last endeavour to match the gentlemen who flaunt that odious dry tobacco plant at which they puff for ever end of poem this recording is in the public domain my mother's hand by hetty howard read for librivox dot org by recording person my mother's hand my head is aching and i wish that I could feel tonight, one well remembered tender touch that used to comfort me so much and put distress to flight. There's not a soothing anodyne or sedative I know such potency can ever hold as that which lovingly controlled my spirit long ago. How oft my burning cheek, as if by Zephyrus was fanned, and nothing interdicted pain or seemed to make me well again so quick as mother's hand. Tis years and years since it was laid, in her own gentle way, on tangled curls of brown and jet, above the downy coverlet, neath which the children lay. As bright as blessed sunlight ray, the past comes back to me. Her fingers turn the sacred page, for a little group of tender age, who gather at her knee. And when those hands together clasped, devout and still were we, to whom it seemed God then and there must surely answer such a prayer, for none could pray as she. A buried love with her that passed into the silent land, a haunting vision of the night, I see encoffined, still and white, a mother's face and hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Leap Year Episode by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Such oranges, so fresh and sweet, so large and lovely, and so cheap, they lay in one delicious heap, and added to the sumptuous feast, for each and all in taste expert, the acme of all fine dessert so singling out the very least as in itself an ample treat 
while sparkling repartee and jest exhilarated host and guest of rarity so delicate in dreamy reverie i ate by magic pinions as it were transported from this realm of snows to be a happy sojourner away down where the orange grows amid the bloom the verdure and the beauty of that tropic land while redolence seemed wafted in from orchard groves of mandarin in dinner costume a la mode expressing from the spongy skin the nectar that ran down her chin in little rills of lusciousness sat maud the beautiful coquette her dainty mouth like two lips wet with morning dew her crimson dress a sad discoloration showed were orange juice it was a sin a polka dot had painted in which moved the roguish girl to say half ruefully half decollete i'm glad it's leapier now for i her voice was like a moistened lute shall wear the flowers by and by i do not like this leaky fruit and looking straight and saucily at cousin ned her vis-a-vis -vis, while will who never dared propose was blushing like a red red rose the company was large and she touched elbows with the exquisite gay archibald who took her wit and pertness all as meant for him who thereby lifted some degrees above less favoured devotees with rainbow sails began to trim his craft of sweet felicity so mirth and reckless afterlude convulsed the merry multitude who laughed at archie's self-esteem and pitied will's long-cherished dream while all declared for her and ned his face was like a silver tray the wedding banquet should be spread before a twelvemonth passed away but ah the sequel blind were we to woman and her strategy for he so long afraid to speak bore off the bride within a week End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. If by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America If If all the sermons good men preach, and all the precepts that they teach, were gathered into one unbroken line of silver speech, the shining filament might reach from earth unto the sun. If all the stories ever told, by wild romancers, young or old, into a thread were drawn, and from its cable coil unrolled, t'would span those misty hills of gold that heaven seems resting on. If every folly, every freak, from day to day, from week to week, is written in the book, with all the idle words we speak, would it not crimson many a cheek upon the page to look? If all the good deeds that we do, from honest motives pure and true, shall there recorded be, known unto God and angels too, is it not said they are so few, and wrought so cheerily? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Perfect Character by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. He lives but half who never stood by the grave of one held dear, and out the deep dark loneliness of a heart bereaved and comfortless from sorrow's crystal plenitude, feeling his loss severe, drooped a regretful tear. O oh, life's divinest draught doth not in the wells of joy abound, for the purest streams are those that flow out of the depths of crushing woe as from the strings of love and fort hid in some narrow mound making it holy ground he hath been blessed who sometimes knelt owning that god is just and in the stillness of cypress shade rosemary's tender symbol laid upon a cherished shrine and felt strengthened in faith and trust over the precious dust so perfect character is wrought rounded and beautified 
by the alchemy of that strange alloy the intermingling of grief and joy so nearer heaven the spirit brought bleeding so sorely tired finds its diviner side end of poem this recording is in the public domain the miracle of spring by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by nemo what touch is like the springs by dainty fingering such rare delight to give tis luxury to live amid fluorescent things through weary months of snow when boreas swept low how many an anxious hour we watched one little flower and tried to make it grow and thrilled with ecstasy when half distrustfully a timid bud appeared a tender scion reared in window greenery but lo spring's wealth of bloom and richness of perfume comes as by miracle then why not possible within a curtained room i know that everywhere the earth is passing fair and strange new life hath caught is but the marvel wrought by sunlight rain and air and a poem this recording is in the public domain Bermuda by Hetty Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Bermuda, O charming blossom of the sea, Atlantic waters bosomed in, abiding place of gaiety, Elysian bower of Coraline, the sprightly, lively debiteuse, recounting all she sees and does. O oh, how it makes the northern heart, with sluggish current half congealed, in ecstasy and vigour start to read about this tropic field the garden of luxuriousness in winter wearing summer's dress with gelid sap and frozen gum in maple trees and hackmatack while waiting for the spring to come of life's necessities we lack and sip the nectar that we find in luscious fruit with golden rind but down the street we dread to walk for all the teachings of our youth receive an agonizing shock do tempting labels lie forsooth for out of florida she says come our bermuda oranges to speed the penitential prayer our rosary we finger over a yellow necklace rich and rare twas purchased at the dollar store but oh it makes us sigh to see that land of amber bijouterie oh ocean wave and flying sail shall never waft us to its shore but if some reckless cyclone gale should drop bermuda at our door twould warm our february sky and bring the time of roses nigh end of poem this recording is in the public domain the charter oak by hetty howard read for librivox dot org by sonia the charter oak I seem to see the old tree stand, its sturdy giant form, a spectacle remembered and a pilgrim shrine for all the land before it met the storm. Unnumbered gales the tree defied, it towered like a king above his courtiers, reaching wide and sheltering science at its side as with protecting wing. Revered as one among the trees to mark the seasons born, to watchful aborigines it told by leafy indices the time of planting corn the landmark of the past is gone its site is overgrown a mansion overlooks the lawn where history is traced upon a parapet of stone shall ever connecticut forget what unto it we owe how wetsworth coped with andrew's threat and tyranny in council met outwitted years ago ay but it rouses loyal spunk to think of that old tree its stately stem its spacious trunk by nature robbed of pith and punk to guard our liberty but of the oak long perished why is earth forever full 
for like the loaf and fish supply its stock of fibre tough and dry seems inexhaustible rare souvenirs the stranger sees who never sees a joke and innocently dreams that these from knotty gnarly scraggy trees were once the charter oak end of poem this recording is in the public domain blossom time by hetty howard read for librivox dot org by sonia blossom time yes it is drawing nigh the time of blossoming the waiting heart beats stronger with every breath of spring the days are growing longer while happy hours go by as if on zephyr wing a wealth of mellow light reflected from the skies the hill and vale is flooding still in their leafless skies the jacqueminotes are budding creating new delight by promise of surprise the air is redolent as ocean breezes are from spicy islands blowing or groves of malabar where sandalwood is growing or sweet diffusive scent from fragrant atarjar just so is loveliness renewed from year to year and thus emotions tender born of the atmosphere of bloom and vernal splendor that words cannot express make spring forever dear can mortal man behold so beautiful a scene without the innate feeling that thus like dying sheen the sunset hues revealing glints pure celestial gold on fields of living green end of poem this recording is in the public domain one of the least of these by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson twas on a day of cold and sleet a little nomad of the street with tattered garments shoeless feet and face with hunger wan great wonder eyes though beautiful hedged in by features pinched and dull betraying lines so pitiful by sorrow sharply drawn ere yet the service half was o'er approached the great cathedral door as choir and organ joined to pour their sweetness on the air then sudden bold impelled to glide with fleetness to the altar's side her trembling form she sought to hide amid the shadows there half fearful lest some worshipper enveloped close in robes of fur had cast a scornful glance at her as she had stolen by but soon the swelling anthem fraught with reverence her spirit caught as rapt she listened heeding not the darkness drawing nigh mid novelty and sweet surprise her soul enraptured seemed to rise and tread the realms of paradise her shivering limbs grew warm and as the shadows longer crept across the chancel angels kept their vigils o'er her as she slept secure from cold and storm no sound her peaceful slumber broke but one whose gentle face bespoke true goodness took her costly cloak in tender thoughtful way and as the sleeper sweetly smiled perchance by dreams of heaven beguiled o'er spread the passive slumbering child and softly stepped away so rest thee child since sorrow's dart has touched like thine the saviour's heart thou hast a nearer dearer part in his great love for thee and when life's shadows all are gone may heaven reveal a brighter dawn to thee who unaware has drawn our hearts in sympathy end of poem this recording is in the public domain lightning bugs by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by betty b lightning bugs around my vine-wreathed portico at evening there's a perfect glow of little lights a-flashing as if the stellar bodies had from superheat grown hyper-mad and spend their ire in clashing as frisky each as shooting star these tiny electricians are the lamprine linnaean or lightning bugs that sparkling gleam like scintillations in a dream of something empyrean 
they brush my face light up my hair my garments touch dart everywhere and if i try to catch them they're quicker than the wicked flea and then i wonder how twould be to have a dress to match them to be a princess in disguise and wear a robe of fireflies all strung and wove together and be the cynosure of all at madame hotton's carnival in fashion's gayest feather so sudden falls upon the grass the overpowering light of gas and through the lattice streaming as wearily i close my eyes brief are the moments that suffice to reach the land of dreaming now at the ball superbly dressed as i suppose to eclipse the rest within an alcove shady a brilliant flame i hope to be while all admire and envy me the bright electric lady but ah they never shine at all my eyes ignite i leave the ball for wrathful tears have filled them i could have crushed them on the spot the bugs i mean and quite forgot that stringing them had killed them end of poem this recording is in the public domain Of Her Who Died by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T We look up to the stars tonight, idolatrous of them, And dream that heaven is in sight, And each a ray of purest light From some celestial gem in her bright diadem. Before that lonely home we wait, Ah, never more to see, her lovely form within the gate where heart and half stone desolate and vine and shrub and tree seem asking where is she there is the cottage love had planned where hope in ashes lies a tower beautiful to stand her monument whose gentle hand and presence in the skies make home of paradise in wintry bleakness nature glows beneath the stellar ray we see the mould but not the rose and meditate if knowledge goes into yon mound of clay with her who passed away of sighs and tears and joys denied do echoes reach up there do seraphs know god does how wide and deep is sorrow's bitter tide of dolor and despair and darkness everywhere dear angel snatched from our caress so suddenly withdrawn alone are we and comfortless as in a dome of emptiness the old routine goes on aimless since thou art gone o oh, dearer unto us than aught in all the world beside of thee to cherish blessed thought so early thy sweet mission wrought as friend as promised bride who lived and loved and died end of poem this recording is in the public domain thanksgiving by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by melanie t Nature, erewhile so marvellously lovely, is bereft of her supernal charm, and with the few dead garlands of departed splendour left, like crape upon her arm, in boreal hints and sudden gusts that fan the glowing ember, the multitude of ways fulfils the promise of November. Upon the path where beauty, sylvan priestess, sped away, lies the rich afterglow of indian summer bringing round the happy holiday that antedates the snow the glad thanksgiving time the cheer the festival commotion that stirs fraternal feeling from the mountains to the ocean o hospitality unclose thy bounty laden hand in generous stealing where is gathered in reunion each long served household band and let no vacant chair show where the strongest brightest link in love's dear chain is broken a symbol more pathetic than by language ever spoken 
Into the place held sacred to the memory of some beloved absentee. Perchance pass to the other shore, O oh, let the stranger come, and in gratuity partake of festal favours that shall sweeten hours of labour and strengthen amity and love unto his friend and neighbour. Let gratitude's pure incense in warm orisons ascend, a blessing to secure and gracious impulse bearing largesse of good gifts extend to all deserving poor so may the day be hallowed by unstinted thanks and giving in sweet remembrance of the dead and kindness to the living end of poem this recording is in the public domain Improvement by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Along the avenue I pass huge piles of wood and stone, and glance at each amorphous mass, whose cumbrous weight has crushed the grass with half resentful groan. Say I, O oh, labor, to despoil some lovely forest scene, or at the granite stratum toil, and desecrate whole roods of soil, is vandal-like and mean. Then ever to disfigure thus our prairie garden land, let me consort with Cerberus, be chained to crabs precipitous, or seek an alien strand. But while this pining, pouting muse the interval ignores, deft industry, no time to lose, contrives and carries, hoists and hews, and symmetry restores. Behold, of rock and pile and board, a modern miracle, my neighbor's dwelling, roofed and floored, that rapid grew as Jonah's gourd, and far more beautiful. The artisan's receding gait has brushed the chips away, where innocence shall recreate, or like the flowers grow and wait, the balminess of May. An arid spot where careless feet have long been wont to roam, where cattle grazed as if to eat, where life's delicious, richest treat, becomes a charming home. O oh, man primeval, hadst thou known, ere rude hands scooped thy grave, of homestead act or building loan, thou wouldst have quite disdained to own a rugged cliff or cave. And now I see how skill and art may cleave fair nature through, disintegrate her breathing heart, and to her tissues torn impart a use and beauty new. And this improvement is to turn to things which God has given to their best purpose, as we learn to make the place where we sojourn homelike and more like heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Receiving Sight by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo In hours of meditation fraught With memories of departed days Comes oft a tender, loving thought Of one who shared our youthful plays In gayest sports and pleasures rife Whose happy nature reveled so That on her ardent, joyous life a shadow lay, we did not know, and bade her look one summer night up to the sky that seemed to hold in dying sunset splendor bright all hues of sapphire, red, and gold. How strange the spell that mystified us all and hushed our wonted glee! As sadly her sweet voice replied, Why, don't you know I cannot see? Too true, those eyes bereft of sight, No blemish bare, no drop serene, But nothing in this world of light and beauty They had ever seen. A dozen years in gentle Ruth, Their impress lent to brow and cheek, When precious words of sacred truth Led her the Saviour's face to seek. Responsive unto earnest prayers, Commingling love and penitence, a blessing came, not unawares, in new and strange experience. And all was light, as faith's clear eye, a brighter world than ours divined. For never clouds obscured the sky, 
that she could see while we were blind. Oh, it must be an awful thing to be shut out from light of day, from summer's grace and bloom of spring, when gladness words cannot portray. But haply into every heart may enter that celestial light that doth to life's dark ways impart a radiance hid from mortal sight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Revenge by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org. Beside my window, day and night, its tendrils reaching left and right, a morning glory grew, with blossoms covered, pink and white, and deep, delicious blue. Its care became my daily thought, who to the sweet diversion brought a bit of florist skill, to guide its progress till it caught the meaning of my will. When through the trellis, in and out, it bent and turned and climbed about, and so ambitious grew, O oh, elite to chasm beyond the spout, where raindrops trickled through. Then, in caressing, graceful way, around a doorknob twined one day, with modest show of pride, all unaware that danger lay just on the other side. An awkward, verdant maid of work, who dearly loved her tasks to shirk, while rummaging among unused apartments with a jerk, the door wide open flung. And lo, there lay uprooted quite the object of my heart's delight. I did not weep or rant, and yet a grain or two of spite my secret thoughts would haunt. So, when at night her favourite beau beside his charmer sat below, that is, Don Le Cuisine, occurred, as all the neighbours know, a semi-tragic scene. The garden hose, obscured from view, turned on itself and drenched the two, a hapless circumstance that lengthened out her frizzes new, but shrunk his Sunday pants. Remember, this was years agone, the madcap now hath sober grown, and hose is better wrought, and neither now would run alone the risk of being caught. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Common by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by recording person On the Common We met on Boston Common Of course it was by chance A sudden unexpected but happy circumstance That gave the dull October day A beautiful refulgent ray Like wandering refugees from A city of renown Impelled to reconnoitre This Massachusetts town Each by a common object urged Upon the park our paths converged. Good nature bubbling over in healthy, hearty laughs, and little lavish speeches like pleasant paragraphs. The kind regard and studied joke his true felicity bespoke. A bit of doleful knowledge confided unto me about the way the doctors, who never could agree, his knees had tortured, softly drew my sympathy and humour too. I hoped he wouldn't lose them, and languish in the dumps, by having two quadrille on a pair of polished stumps. But a corky limb, though one might dread, isn't half as bad as a wooden head. He censured those empirics who never heal an ill, 
though bound by their diplomas to either cure or kill, who should with ignominy crowned their patients follow underground. I left them at the foot of the soldier's monument, with incoherent mutterings, as though twere his intent, to turn the sod a rod or two, and sleep beside the boys in blue. In Hartford's charming circles, his bonhomie I miss, and having never seen him from that day unto this, I think of him with much regret, as lying with the soldiers yet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Woman's Help by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org By April 6090, California, United States of America Woman's Help Sometimes I long to write an ode And magnify his name The man of honor on the road To opulence and fame On whom has never aid bestowed By any helpful dame To all the world I fain would show That talent widely known rare eloquence of burning glow to melt a heart of stone that all his gifts a dazzling row are his and his alone but him of character and mind superb alert and strong i never study but to find the subject of my song some paragon of womankind has helped him all along he may not know he may not guess how much to her he owes her every scion of success that in his nature grows developed by her watchfulness becomes a blooming rose from buffeting in humble place and labors ill begun to proud achievement in the race and laurels grandly won his trials all she dares to face as friend and champion the bars that hinder his advance and half obscure the goal the stubborn bond of circumstance that irritates his soul the counter shafts of arrogance all yield to her control he builds a tower she below is handing up the bricks his light is brilliant just as though her hand has trimmed the wicks. He prays her daily bread, the dough a woman deigns to mix. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tabargaining by Hetty Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Tabargaining. Oh, the rare exhilaration! Oh, the novel delectation! of a ride down the slide packed like ice in zero weather pleasure seekers close together on a board as thin as wafer barely wider scarcely safer at the height of recreation find a glorious inspiration ere the speedy termination in the snowy meadow wide sloping to the river's side oh such quakers we begin it timorous of the icy route but to learn in half a minute what felicity is in it as we shoot down the chute smothered in toboggan suit redingote or roquelaure buttoned up and down before mittens cap and moccasin just a garb to revel in so the signal given lo over solid ice and snow down the narrow gauge we go swifter than a bird overhead swifter than an arrow sped from the staunchest strongest bow oh it beats all copenhagen silly lovers paradise like the frozen androscoggin slippery and smooth and nice is the track of the toboggan and there's nothing cheap about it everything is steep about it the insolvent weep about it for the biggest thing on ice is its tip-top price but were this three times the money then the game were thrice as funny ye who dwell in latitudes where the blizzard never intrudes and the water seldom freezes ye of balmy southern regions alabama's languid legions from the hot blast of your breezes where the verdure of the trees is limp and loose and pitiful come up here where branches bare stand like spikes in frosty air come up here where arctic rigor shall restore your bloom and vigor making life enjoyable come and take a jog on the unparalleled toboggan such a zest that he who misses never knows what perfect bliss is so the sport the day's sensation thrills and recreates creation end of poem this recording is in the public domain
The Woods by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo I love the woods when the magic hand of spring, as if sweeping the keys of a worn-out instrument, touches the earth. When beauty and song and the gladness of birth awaken the heart of the desolate land and carol its rapture to every breeze. In summer's still solstice, my steps are drawn to the shade of the forest trees, to revel with Pan in his secret haunts, to pipe mazurkas while satyrs dance, or lull to soft slumber some favorite fawn, and fascinate strange wild birds and bees. I love the woods when autumnal fires are kindled on every hill, when dead leaves rustle in grove and field, and trees are known by the fruits they yield, and the wild grapes, sweetened by frost, inspire a mildly desperate, bibulous thrill. There's a joy for which I would fling to the air my petty portion of wealth and fame, and tracking the rabbit o'er fresh-fallen snow, the ways of the coon and opossum to know, to capture squirrels when branches are bare, as the cupboard shell of that ancient dame. Oh, I long to explore the woods again in my own aboriginal way, as before I knew how culture could frown, on a hoydenish gait and a homespun gown, or dream that the strata of proud upper ten would smile at rusticity's naivety. I sigh for the pleasures of long ago, in youth's sweet halcyon time, when better beloved than the thoroughfare by multitudes trod, were the woodlands, where was never a path that I did not know, nor thrifty sapling I dared not climb. Alas for lost freedom, alas for me, for, oh, society's lip would curl, propriety's self with scornful eye, and guilt-edged fashion would pass me by, to know that sometimes I'm dying to be the romp, the rover, the same old girl. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Like Summer by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis November Tis a summer's day, for tropic airs are blowing as soft as whispered roundelay from unseen lips that seem to say to feathered songsters going to sunnier southern climes afar, stay where you are, stay where you are. And other tokens glad as these declare that summer lingers, round latent buds still hum the bees, slow fades the green from forest trees. Your autumn's artist fingers have touched the landscape, and instead brought out the amber, brown, and red. The invalid may yet enjoy his favorite recreation. Gay romping girl, unfettered boy, in outdoor sports the time employ, and happy consummation of prudent plans the farmer know, ere wintry breezes round him blow. And they by poverty controlled, Good fortune shall betide them, as scenes of beauty they behold, and seem to revel in the gold which Plutus has denied them. For ah, the poor, from wants despair, oft covet wealth they never share. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sheridan's Last Ride by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson While Phoebus lent his hottest rays To signalize midsummer days, I stood in that far-famed enclosure By thousands visited, Where in the stillness of reposure Are grouped battalions dead, Where round each simple burial stone The grass for decades twain has grown, Protecting them in dreamless slumber Who perished long ago, The multitude's defying number, a part of war's tableau. Along the winding avenue a vast procession came in view, the mourners' slow advancing column with reverent step drew near. 
the dead march plain sad and solemn above a soldier's bier there were the colonels brigadiers comrades in arms of other years civilians true and loyal hearted to him their bravest man who seemed to say to those departed make room for sheridan anon beside the new-made mound the war-worn veterans gathered round and spoke of leon and of lander and others ranked as high recalling each his old commander one not afraid to die thus silent tenants one by one are crowding in at arlington thus sheridan the horseman daring has joined the honored corps of those their true insignia wearing who battle never more potomac's waves shall placid flow and sing his requiem soft and low his terrace grave be sweet with clover and daisies star his bed for sheridan's last ride is over the general is dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Bit of Gladness by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org, by April 6090, California, United States of America. A Bit of Gladness As I near my lonely cottage, at the close of weary day, there's a little bit of gladness comes to meet me on the way. Dimpled, tanned, and petticoated, innocent as angels are, like a smiling straying sunbeam is my Stella like a star soon a hand of tissue softness slips confidingly in mine and with tender look appealing eyes of beauty sweetly shine like a gentle shepherd guiding some lost lamb unto the fold so she leads me homeward prattling till her stories are all told papa i'm so glad to see you cousin mabel came to-day and the gas man brought a letter that he said you'd better pay yes an awful things has happened my poor kitty's drowned to death Mama's got the pigs in clover. Here she stops for want of breath. I'm like the bold knight errant from his castle who would roam, trusting her, my faithful steward, for a strict account of home. And each day I toil and hazard, all that any man may dare, for a resting place at even, and the love that waits me there. And sometimes I look with pity on my neighbor's mansion tall. There are chambers full of pictures. There are marbles in the hall. Yet with all the signs of splendor that make gild a pile of stone, not a living thing about it, but the owner grim and lone. I believe that all his millions he would give without repine for a little bit of gladness in his life like that in mine. This it is that makes my pathway beautiful wherever trod, keeps my soul from wreck and ruin, keeps me nearer to my God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Charity Ball by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Charity Ball. There was many a token of festal display, and reveling crowds who were never so gay, and as it were Aeolus charming the hours, an orchestra hidden by foliage and flowers. There were tapestries fit for the home of a queen, and mirrors that glistened in wonderful sheen. There was feasting and mirth in the banqueting hall for this was the annual charity ball there were pompous civilians in wealth who abide displaying their purses the source of their pride and plethoric dealers in margins and stocks and owners of acres of elegant blocks and tenement landlords who cling to a cent when from the poor widow exacting her rent immovable stern as an adamant wall and yet who came down to this charity ball there was beauty whose toilet superb and unique cost underpaid industry many a week of arduous labor of eye and heartache its starving inadequate pittance to make there were mischievous maidens and cavaliers bold whose blushes and glances and coquetry told a tale of the monarch who held them in thrall who met as by chance at the charity ball there were delicate viands the poor never taste and dollars were lavished in prodigal waste to pamper the palate of epicures rich who drew from the wine cellar's cavernous niche excelsior brands of the rarest champagnes to loosen their tongues though it pilfered their brains oh sad if a step in some woeful downfall 
should ever be traced to a charity ball outside of the window pressed close to the pane and furrowed by tears that had fallen like rain was the face of a woman so spectral in hue with great liquid eyes like twin oceans of blue and cheeks in whose hollows were written the lines that pitiless hunger so often defines who muttered as closer she gathered the shawl oh never for me is this charity ball from liveried hirelings who bade her be gone by uniformed minions compelled to move on out into the street again driven to roam for friends she had none neither fortune nor home while carnival goers in morning's dull gray as homeward returning fatigued and blasé a vision encountered their hearts to appall and banish all thought of the charity ball as if seeking warmth from the icy curbstone a form half reclining half clad and unknown dead eyes looking up with a meaningless stare lay close to the crowded and broad thoroughfare a form so emaciate the spirit had fled but the pulpit and press and the public all said as society's doings they sought to recall that a brilliant success was the charity ball end of poem this recording is in the public domain the bell of baltimore by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by nemo the bell of baltimore one of the notable features of baltimore is the big bell that hangs in the city hall tower to strike the hour and sound the fire alarm it is called big sam and weighs five thousand pounds a million feet above the ground for so it seemed in winding round a million and two more the latter stiff and sore while perspiration formed a part of every reeking pore i viewed the city like a chart spread out upon the floor and said great guy jehoiakin to me is meagre pleasure in the height of spires and domes of walls like ancient rome's nor care i for the marts of trade or shelves of musty tomes nor yet for yonder colonnade before your palace homes but curiosity is keen to know the city's reigning queen who suiteth well the score of suitors at her door oh which of your divinities is she whom all adore embodiment of truth who is the bell of baltimore veracity's revolving eyes looked up as if to read the skies why lor a miss see dar de bell is in de ar land sakes of all de mysteries you never learned before why don't you know big sam he is de bell of baltimore and a poem this recording is in the public domain. Christmas at Church by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Christmas at Church T'was drawing near the holiday When piety and pity met In whispering counsel and agreed That Christmas time in homes of need Should be remembered in a way They never could forget the noble generosity took youth and goodness by the hand and planned a thousand charming ways to celebrate this best of days while hearts were held in sympathy by love's encircling band so multitudes together came like wandering magi from the east with precious gifts unto the king with every good and perfect thing to satisfy a shivering frame or amplify a feast the angels had looked long and far the happy scene to parallel when through the sanctuary door were carried gifts from shop and store the treasures of the rich bazaar to give but not to sell as once the apostolic twelve of goods allotment made so equity dealt out with care the widows and the orphans share and of the aged forced to delve at drudging task or trade oh could the joy which tears express that out of gladness come, B 
be mirrored in its tender glow before the beautiful tableau ingratitude and selfishness would shrink abashed and dumb if every year and everywhere could kindness thus expand in bounteous gratuity to all her children earth would be a flowery vale like eden fair a milk and honey land end of poem this recording is in the public domain mysterious by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by melanie t the morning sun rose bright and fair upon a lovely village where prosperity abounded and ceaseless hum of industry in lines of friendly rivalry from day to day resounded its shaded avenues were wide and closely bordered either side with cottages or mansions or marked by blocks of masonry that might defy a century to loosen from their stanchions its peaceful dwellers daily vied to make this spot with anxious pride a paradise of beauty recounted its attractions o'er and its adornment held no more a pleasure than a duty but ere the daylight passed away that hamlet fair in ruins lay in hapless people scattered like playthings at the cyclone's will and scarce remained one domicile its fury had not shattered few moments of the tempest's wrath sufficed to mark one dreadful path with scenes of devastation while over piles of wild debris rose shrieks of dying agony above the desolation o oh, mystery who can understand why sudden from god's mighty hand destructive bolts of power without discrimination strike the evil and the good alike as in that dreadful hour alas for aching hearts that wait to-day in homes made desolate by one sharp blow appalling for all who kneel by altars lone and strive to say thy will be done that awful day recalling we dare not question his decrees who see if not as mortals sees nor doubt his goodness even nor let our hearts be dispossessed of faith that he disposeth best all things in earth and heaven end of poem this recording is in the public domain be not anxious by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson be careful for nothing philippians four six revised version be not anxious of all the precepts in the book by word of inspiration given that bear the import tone and look of messages direct from heaven from revelation back to genesis is nothing needed half so much as this ah well the great apostle spake in admonition wise and kind who bade humanity forsake the petty weaknesses that bind the spirit like a bird with pinioned wings that to a broken bough despairing clings were all undue anxiety eliminated from desire could feverish fears and fancies be consumed on some funeral pyre like holy hedicomb or sacrifice twould be accepted up in paradise could this machinery go on without the friction caused by fret what greater loads were lightly drawn more easily were trials met then might existence be with blessing rife and lengthened out like hezekiah's life oh be not anxious trouble grows when cherished like a secret grief it is the worm within the rose that eats the heart out leaf by leaf and though the outer covering be fair the weevil of decay is busy there in deep despondency to pine or vain solicitude is to deny this truth divine that god is great and good that he is ruler over earth and heaven and so disposes and makes all things even end of poem this recording is in the public domain mount vernon by hattie howard 
read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Mount Vernon, subdued and sad, I trod the place where he, the hero, lived and died, where long entombed beneath the shade by willow bough and cypress made the peaceful scene with verdure rife he and the partner of his life beloved of every land and race are sleeping side by side the summer solstice at its height reflected from potomac's tide a glare of light and through the trees intensified the southern breeze that dallied in the deep ravines with graceful ferns and evergreens while northern cheeks so strangely white grew dark as nubia's pride what must this homestead once have been in boundless hospitality when green or putnam may have met the host who welcomed lafayette or when pulaski honored guest accepted shelter food and rest while rank and talent gathered in its banquet hall of luxury what comfort cheer and kind intent the weary stranger oft hath known when she its mistress fair and good reigned here in peerless womanhood when soft shy maiden fancy gave encouragement to soldiers brave and washington his presence lent to grace its bright hearthstone o beautiful mount vernon home the mecca of our long desire of more than passing interest to north and south to east and west to all columbia's children free a precious priceless legacy thine altar shrine as pilgrims come rekindles patriot fire end of poem this recording is in the public domain a prisoner by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by nico Ropisora. where i can see him all day long and hear his wild spontaneous song before my window in his cage a blithe canary sits and swings and circles round on golden wings and startles all the vicinage when from his china tankard he takes a dainty drink to clear his throat for as sweet a note as ever yet was carolled by lark or bobolink Sometimes he drops his pretty head and seems to be dispirited. And then his little mistress says, Poor Dicky misses his chickweed, or else I've fed him musty seed as stale as last year's oranges. But all the time I wonder if we half comprehend in sweet song words the thought of birds or why so oft the raptures in sudden silence end they do not pine for forest wilds within the blue canary isles as exiles from their native home for in a foreign domicile they first essayed their gamut trill beneath a cage's gilded dome but maybe some sad throbbing betimes their spirits stirs who love as we dear liberty that they admired and petted are only prisoners End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cuba by Hattie Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Catherine Rivera. As one long struggling to be free, O suffering isle, we look to thee in sympathy and deep desire that thy fair borders yet shall hold a people happy, self controlled saved and exalted as by fire burning like thine own tropic heat thousands of lips afar repeat the story of thy wrongs and woes while argosies to thee shall bear of men and money everywhere strength to withstand thy stubborn foes hispaniola waves her plume defiant over many a tomb where sleep thy sons the true and brave but lo an army coming on the places fill of heroes gone for liberty their lives who gave the nations wait to hear thy shout of independence ringing out chief of the antilles what wilt thou buffets and jives from your fate 
Old monarchy dilapidate, Or freedom's laurels for thy brow. In man's extremity it is That heaven's opportunities Shine forth like jewels from the mine. Then Cuba, in thy hour of need, With vision clear the tokens read, And trust for aid that power divine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sangamon River by Hetty Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Sangamon River. O sunny Sangamon, thy name to me, soft syllabled like some sweet melody, familiar is since adolescent years, as household phrases ringing in my ears. Its measured cadence sounding to and fro from the dim corridors of long ago. There was a time in happy days gone by, that rosy interval of youth, when I, the scholar ardent early learned to trace great tributaries to their starting place, and thine some prairie hollow obsolete, whose name how few remember or repeat. Like thee, meandering, yet wafted back, from distant hearth and lonely bivouac, from strange vicissitudes in other lands, from half-wrought labours and unfinished plans, I come, in thy cool depth my brow to lave, and rest a moment by thy silver wave. But ah, what means thy muddy, muggy hue? I thought thee limpid as yon ether blue, I thought an angel's wing might dip below thy sparkling surface and be white as snow and of thy current i had dared to drink if not as one imbibing draughts of ink has some rough element of horrid clay that spoils the earth like lava beds they say come sliding down as avalanches do and thy fair bosom percolated through or some apothecary's compound vial polluted thee so many a murky mile why not proud state beneficence ensure selling thy soil or giving to the poor for sad it is that dust of illinois with coal and compost its conjoined alloy a more so washed from mississippi's mouth should build up acres for our neighbors south river i grieve but not for loss of dirt one stainless just because of what thou wert thus on thy banks i linger and reflect that surely as all waterways connect forever flowing onward to the sea shall the great billow thy redemption be and now dear sangamon farewell i wait on that elysian scene to meditate when separated from the dregs of earth life's dream shall sweeter be of better worth and like the ocean with its restless tide by its own action cleansed and purified end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Syringas by Hetty Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Syringas The smallest flower beside my path In loveliness of bloom Some element of comfort hath To rid my heart of gloom But these of spotless purity and fragrant as the rose as sad a sight recall to me as time shall ever disclose oh there are pictures on the brain sometimes by shadows made till dust is blent with dust again that never never fade and things supremely bright and fair as ever known in life suggest the darkness of despair and sanguinary strife i shut my eyes Tis all in vain, the battlefield appears, And one among the thousand slain In manhood's brilliant years, An elbow pillowing his head, And on the crimson sand Syringa blooms, disdained and dead, Within his rigid hand. Could she foresee who from the stem Had plucked that little spray of flowers, That he would cherish them Unto his dying day? Give these to M., Tis almost night, and tell her that I love. Alas, the letter he would write was finished up above. And so, with each recurring spring on decoration day, 
when to our hero's grace we bring the blossom wealth of may while martial strains are soft and low and music seems a prayer unto a hallowed spot i go and leave syringa there. end of poem this recording is in the public domain Stormbound by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. My careful plans, all storm subdued, in disappointing solitude, the weary hours began, and scarce I deemed when time had sped, marked only by the passing tread of some pedestrian. But with the morrow's tranquil dawn, a fairy scene I looked upon that filled me with delight far reaching from my own abode the world in matchless splendour glowed arrayed in spotless white the surface of the hillside slope gleamed in my farthest vision's scope like opalescent stone rich jewels hung on every tree whose crystalline transparency golconda's gems outshone beyond the line where wayside posts stood up like fear-inspiring ghosts of awful form and mien a mansion tall my neighbour's pride a seeming castle fortified uprose in wondrous sheen the evergreens loomed up before my staunch and storm-defying door like snowy palaces that one dare only penetrate with reverence as at heaven's gate awed by its mysteries the apple tree's extended arms upheld a thousand varied charms the curious tracery of trellised grapevine seemed to me a rare network of filigree in silver drapery and i no longer fought it hard from favourite pursuits debarred nor gazed with rueful face for every object seemed to be invested with the witchery of magic art and grace and though a multitude of cares perplexing profitless affairs absorbed the hours it seems that on the golden steps of thought i mounted heavenward and wrought out many hopeful schemes thus every day though it may span the gulf wherein some cherished plan lies disarranged and crossed if ere it's closed we shall have trod the path that leads us nearer god cannot be counted lost end of poem this recording is in the public domain the master of the grange by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by melanie t the type of enterprise is he of sense and thrift and toil who reckons less on pedigree than rich productive soil and no blue bud if such there be his veins can ever spoil and yet on blood his heart is set he has his sacred cow some alderney or jersey pet the mistress of the mow his favourite pig is by brevet lord suffolk of the slough to points of stock he is alive as keenest cattle king a thoroughbred he deigns to drive but not a mongrel thing the very bees within his hive are crossed without a sting if apple boughs drop pumpkins and tomatoes grow on trees it is because his grafting hand has so diverted these that alien shoots with native stand like twin-born siamese no neater farm a nabob owns its care his chief employ to find fertility in bones and briars to destroy where once he lightly skipped the stones a whistling happy boy the ancient plough and awkward flail he banished long ago the zigzag fence with ponderous rail he dares to overthrow and wields with sinews strong and hale the latest style of hoe the household founded as it were upon the decalogue he classes with the minister the rural pedagogue 
and as a sort of angel care regards his spotted dog his wife reviews the magazines his children lead the school he tries a thousand new machines and keeps his temper cool but bristles at kentucky jeans and her impressive mule with science letting down the bars enlightening ignorance enigmas deeper than the stars he sells as by a glance and raises cinnamon cigars from poor tobacco plants by no decree of fashion dressed and busier than fate the student farmer keeps abreast with mighty men of state and treasures like his sunday vest the motto educate beyond encircling hills of blue where i may never range this monarch in his realm i view of title new and strange and make profound obscience to the master of the grange end of poem this recording is in the public domain a friend indeed by hattie howard Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America. A Friend Indeed If every friend who meditates in soft unspoken thought, with winning courtesy and tact, the doing of a kindly act, to cheer some lonely lot, were like the friend of whom I dream, then hardship but a myth would seem. If sympathy were always thus, oblivious of space, and like the tendrils of the vine, could just as lovingly incline to one in distant place to draw the world together so might none the name of stranger know if every throb responsive that my ardent spirit thrills could like the skylark's ecstasy be vocal in sweet melody beyond dividing hills in octaves of the atmosphere were music wafted to his ear if every friendship were like one so helpful and so true to other hearts as sad as mine twould bring the joy so near divine and hope revive anew so life's dull path would it illume and radiate beyond the tomb end of poem this recording is in the public domain the needed one by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by catherine rivera twas not rare versatility nor gift of poesy or art nor piquant sparkling jus d'esprit which at the call of fancy come that touched the universal heart and won the world's encomium it was not beauty's potent charm for admiration followed her unmindful of the rounded arm the fair complexion's brilliancy if form and feature shapely were or lacked the grace of symmetry so not by marked especial power she grew endeared to human thought but just because in trial's hour was loving service to be done or sympathy and counsel sought she made herself the needed one o oh, great the blessedness must be of heart and hand and brain alert in projects wise and manifold impending sorrow to avert that duller natures fail to see or stand aloof severe and cold and who shall doubt that this is why in womanhood's fluorescent prime she passed the portals of the sky as if a life thus truly given to purpose pure and act sublime were needed also up in heaven end of poem this recording is in the public domain thy will be done by hattie howard Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Thy will be done. Sometimes the silver cord of life is loosed at one brief stroke, as when the elements at strife with nature's wild contentions rife uproot the sturdy oak, or fell disease in patience born attenuates the frame, till the meek sufferer, wan and worn, of energy and beauty shorn, death's sweet release would claim by instant touch or long decay is dissolution wrought when lost to earth the grave and gay the young and old who pass away abide in hallowed thought in dear regard together drawn affection's debt to pay 
fond greetings we exchange at dawn with one who ere the day be gone is bruised and lifeless clay o thou in manhood's morning time with health and hope elate for whom in youth's enchanting prime the bells of promise seem to chime we mourn thy early fate to us how sudden yet to thee perchance god kindly gave some warning ere the fatal key unlock the door of mystery that lies beyond the grave then let us hope that one who found such favor trust and love and cordial praise from all around for rare fidelity renowned found favor too above so all is well though swift or slow god's will be done and we draw near to him for close and low beneath his chastening hand the blow will fall less heavily end of poem this recording is in the public domain snowflakes by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by eva davis of specious weight like tissue freight the snowflakes are and sparkle pure as the rich perure a lovely queen were proud to wear as volatile as fine and rare as thistledown dispersed in air or bits of filmy lace like nature's teardrops strewn around that beautify and warm the ground but melt upon my face a ton or more against my door they lie and look in form and tint like piles of lint when war's alarum roused the land wrought out by woman's loyal hand from linen rag and robe and band from garments cast aside in hospital on battlefield the shattered limb that bound and healed or staunched life's ebbing tide i see the gleam of lake and stream the silver glint and frost portrayed of the bright cascade they bear the moisture of marshes dank the dew of the lawn or river bank the river itself by sunlight drank all these in frigid air that strange alembic crystallize in odd fantastic shape and size like gems of dazzling glare oh of the snow such fancies grow till thought is lost in wandering and wondering if portions of their drapery the angel beings sad to see so much of earth's impurity have dropped from clear skies as snowflakes hiding stain and blot to make this world a fairer spot and more like paradise end of poem this recording is in the public domain Menadnock by hattie howard read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson one summer time with love imbued to climb the mount explore the wood or rove from pole to pole upon Menadnock's brow i stood a lone adventurous soul beyond the bay state borderline a sweeping vista grand and fine embraced the berkshire hills embosomed hamlets clumps of pine and country domiciles afar mount tom in verdant teak and holyoke twin companion peak appeared gigantic cones the burning sunlight scorched my cheek and seemed to melt the stones beneath the gnarled and twisted root i loosed a pebble with my foot that leaped the precipice and like an arrow seemed to shoot adown the deep abyss beside the base that solstice day a city chap who chanced to stray was shooting somewhat too who when the nugget sped that way his firelock quickly drew while right and left he sought the quail or the timid hare that crossed his trail rang out a wild ha ha that might have turned the visage pale of a red-skinned chippewa the game was his for it made him quail he flung his gun and fled the vale the mountain dwellers say as though pursued by a comet's tail and disappeared for a End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Never Had a Chance by Hattie Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. Fresh from piano, school, and books, a happy girl with rosy looks 
young ploughman rude and wan despite her pretty pouting prejudice her deep distaste for rural bliss or countryfied delight romance through all her nature ran indeed to wed a husband man suffused her ardent maiden fort by lofty fancy dwelt upon a new queen anne a terraced lawn a city's corner lot her lily fingers that so well could paint a scene in aquarelle or broider plush with leaves and vines no more of real labour knew than waxen petals of the dew on native eagle tines anon with lapse of tender ways that emphasised the courting days the housewife in her apron blue as mistress of her new abode by frequent lacrimation showed her grief and blunders too the butter making bread and cheese the old folks difficult to please the harvest hands voracious bears the infantry a parent's pride by duos proudly classified so multiplied her cares the treadmill round of duties that makes any life inane and flat without diversion sandwiched in the drudgery the overplus of toil and trouble arduous were rugged discipline what time for books and music when the lambs were bleating in their pen the chickens peeping at the door the rodent gnawing at the churn the buckwheat wafers crisps to burn the kettle boiling o'er to her so far between and few what resting spells the farmer knew what intervals for culture and when intellect assumed the race he peerless held the foremost place no nobler in the land by virtue of exalted rank the brilliant senator from adorned society's expanse while by his side with folded hands her beauty gone the woman stands who never had a chance end of poem this recording is in the public domain sorrow and joy by hetty howard read for librivox dot org by toa in sad procession borne away to sound a funeral knell affection's tribute thus we pay and in earth's sheltering bosom lay the friend to whom but yesterday we gave the sad farewell but scarce the melancholy sound has died upon the ear before the mournful dirge is drowned by wading anthems glad rebound that stir the solemn air around with merry peals and clear within our home doth gladness tread so closely upon grief that in the tears of sorrow shed over our beloved lamented dead we see reflected joy instead that gives a blessed relief a father and a daughter gone beyond our fireside for one we loved and leaned upon the skilful archer death had drawn his bow and one in life's sweet dawn went out a happy bride we gave to heaven in manhood's prime him whose brave strength and worth life's rugged steeps had taught to climb and her for whom a tuneful rhyme the bells of promise sweetly chime we consecrate to earth thus each a mystic path untried has entered god is just we leave with him our friend who died with him we leave our fair young bride who shall no more with us abide and in his goodness trust oh life and death uncertainty bright hopes and anxious fears commingle so bewilderingly that perfect joy we may not see till all shall reunited be 
beyond this veil of tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Watch Hill by Hattie Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Watch Hill. Fair summer home peninsula, enriched by every breeze, from fragrant islands wafted far across the sunny seas. A profile rare, a height of land, outlined gainst heaven's blue, with bolder touch than skilful hand of artist ever drew. In mountain billows that parade, the grandeur of the deep is his supremacy displayed whose hands the waters keep no sweep of waves in broad expanse with wild weird melody shall thus an unseen world enhance there shall be no more sea a wealth of joy perfected days where glorious sunset dies resplendent in declining rays surpass italia's skies proud caravanseries that compete in studied arts to please the multitude with restless feet from earth's antipodes a motley company astray the sojourner for health the grave serene the devotee of fashion and of wealth artistic cottages upreared in beauty strength and skill the happy healthful homes endeared to lovers of watch hill a golden crown adorns the spot for ever blessed be the hand beneficent that wrought a temple by the sea a star in some bright diadem in glory it shall be for truly i will honour them saith god who honour me when christians meet to praise and pray may feet that never trod the sanctuary learn the way unto the house of god glad paeans down the centuries with joy the world shall thrill the Lord revered and honored is the glory of Watch Hill. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Supplicating by Hattie Howard. Read for LibriVox.org by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. One morn I looked across the way, and saw you fling your window wide to welcome in the breath of May in breezes from the mountain side, and greet the sunlight's earliest ray with happy look and satisfied. The pansies on your window sill in terracotta flower pot, like royal gold and purple frill upon the stony casement wrought, adorned your tasteful domicile and claimed your time and care and thought in cherry trees the robins sang their sweetest carol to your ear and shouts of merry children rang out on the dewy atmosphere but to my heart there came a pang that my salute you did not hear i envied then the favoured breeze that dallied with your flowing hair begrudged the songsters in the trees and longed to be a flower at fair some favoured blossom like heart-ease within your miniature parterre o oh, heart that finds such ample room within thy confines broad and true for song and sunshine and perfume and all benign impulses go i pray thee dissipate my gloom and take in thy petitioner too end of poem this recording is in the public domain Honest John by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He was a man whose lot was cast, as some might think, in lines severe, in humble toil whose life was passed from week to week, from year to year. And yet, by wife and children blessed, he labored on with cheerful zest as one revered and set apart a quaint unusual name he bore that well became the frugal heart while plain habiliments he wore without a tremor or a chill at thought of some uncancelled bill a king might not disdain to wear the title so appropriate to one who never sought to share exalted station amongst the great nor cared if on the scroll of fame were never traced his worthy name 
as bound by honor's righteous law in strictest rectitude he wrought the man who calmly clearly saw his duty and who dallied not to garner life's necessities for those whose comfort heightened his the parent bird its brood protects as fledglings in their downy nest until a power their flight directs from trial trips to distant quest through trackless zones of ether blue for bird companions strange and new but ere his babes from prattlers grew upon his knee or by his side to womanhood and manhood true too soon we thought the father died how could we know when death was nigh those little wings were taught to fly another name his boyhood knew so seldom heard that lapse of years had made it seem a thing untrue unmusical to friendly ears and thus his appellation odd his passport was where'er he trod so long on every lip and tongue as if by universal whim to him had his cognomen clung and like a garment fitted him that angels even must have heard of one like them in love preferred and when he came to heaven's door to peter's self or acolyte the holy warder looking o'er tis honest john he said aright and his pilgrim spirit passed within because his walk with god had been end of poem this recording is in the public domain bushnell park by hetty howard read for LibriVox.org by eva davis sweet resting place that long hath been a boon elysian mid the din of city life mid city smoke where weary ones who toil and spin have turned aside as to an inn whose swinging sign a welcome spoke where misanthropes find medicine and peals of laughter that began with ancient resurrected joke or ready wit of harlequin where children free from discipline take on diversion's easy yoke fair oasis to view aright its charming paths its sloping height its beautiful and broad expanse must one approach in witching night when like abodes of airy sprite revealed unto the wondering glance or flooded with electric light than luna's beams more dazzling bright illumined nooks the scene enhance while zephyrs mischievous unite the timid stroller to affright by swaying boughs and shadow dance the capital that crowns the hill where boreas sweeps with icy chill a masterpiece of studied art conceived by genius versatile and fashioned with unerring skill o'erlooks the busy crowded mart and like a kingly domicile its burnished dome and sculpture thrill with admiration every heart and strangers pause beyond the rill to view its grandeur lingering still and with reluctant steps depart o bushnell park memorial soil that marks success though near to foil of one who with prophetic ken with honest zeal and ceaseless toil opposed the vandal wish to spoil this lovely bit of vale and glen who mid discussion and turmoil of adverse minds did not recoil from vigorous stroke of tongue and pen and then till passion ceased to boil untroubled waters poured out oil and to his plans won other men so when fatigued and overwrought in summer time when skies are hot we seek its verdant velvet sward oh may we hold in reverent thought the debt we owe forgetting not the spirit passed to its reward of one whose giant soul was fraught with true benignity who sought to touch humanity's quick cord with fire from heaven's altar brought that love and zeal and being caught as inspiration from the lord end of poem this recording is in the public domain At General Grant's Tomb by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T Afar my loyal spirit stirred at mention of his name Afar in ringing notes I heard the clarion voice of fame So to his tomb hope long deferred with reverent step I came The pilgrim muse revivified and half forgotten day A slow procession tearful eyed in funeral array and from MacGregor's lonely side a hero borne away. 
Here sleeps he now, where long ago hath nature raised his mound, a mighty channel far below, divided hills around, where countless thousands come and go, as to a shrine renowned. With awe do strangers' eyes discern a casket mid the green, luxuriance of a flower and fern, airy and cool and clean, unchanged from spring to spring's return, this charnel chamber seen. His country's will, his care and thought, beloved in peace was he. Magnanimous in war shall not the nation grateful be, and render at his burial spot a testimonial free. O oh, let us, ere the days come on, when energy is spent, to him the silent soldier gone, statesman and president, on Riverside's majestic lawn, uprear a monument. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Be Courteous by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090 California, United States of America Be Courteous Ah, yes, why not? Is one more adventitious born than others? Shekels richer, honors fuller, and all that? that he can pass his fellows by with lofty scorn, nor even show the slight regard, the lifting of the hat? Why prate of social status, class, or rank, when earth is commententing ground, the heritage of all mankind? Except in purity is there no royal birth, no true nobility but nobleness of heart and mind? Life is so short, one journey long, a pilgrimage that we cannot retrace, nor ever pass this way again then why not turn for some poor soul a brighter page and line the way with courtesies unto our fellow men to give a graceful word or smile or lend a hand to one downcast and trembling on the borders of despair may help him to look up and better understand why god has made the sky so bright and put the rainbow there be courteous is nothing helpful half so cheap as kind urbanity that doth so much of gladness bring more precious too than all the treasures of the deep making the winter of discomfort seem like joyous spring be courteous and gentle be serene and good those grand ennobling and enduring virtues all may claim of each may it be said of the great multitude oh that my life were more like such in one of blessed fame is it that overcrowding care anxiety vortex of pleasure the incessant round of toil and strife beget indifference repressing love and sympathy till we forget the beautiful amenities of life then cometh the sad day when it with poignant sting lost opportunities shall speak to us reproachfully and ours shall be the disapproval of the king discourteous to these my creatures you have wounded me end of poem this recording is in the public domain a new suit by Hattie Howard, read for LibriVox.org, by Betty B. A New Suit The artist and the loom unseen, in textures soft as crepe de sheen, Spring weaves her royal robe of green, with grasses fringed and daisies dotted, With furzy tufts like mosses fine, and showy clumps of eglatine, With dainty shrub and creeping vine, upon the verdant fabric knotted, o oh, winter takes our love away for ashen hues of sober gray so when the blooming blushing may comes out in bodice cap and kirtle with arbutus her corsage laced and roses clinging to her waist we crown her charming queen of taste her chaplet wreath of modest myrtle for eighteen centuries and more her fairy hands of mottled o'er the same habiliments she wore at her primeval coronation and still the pattern exquisite for every age a perfect fit in every land the favorite elicits world-wide admiration gay butterflies of fashion you who wear a suit a year or two then agitate for something new look at regina the patrician her cleverness is more than gold who so transforms from fabrics old the things a marvel to behold and glories in the exhibition why worry for an overdress 
the acme of luxuriousness beyond all envy to possess renewed as oft as lambkin fleeces why flutter round in pretty piquet to follow style's capricious freak to match pongee or moray antique and break your peace in hopeless pieces o oh, mantua maker costumer and fair robed wearer study her and imitate the conjurer so prettily economizing without demure regret or pout who always puts the bright side out and never frets at all about the world's penchant for criticizing end of poem this recording is in the public domain the little clock by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by betty b the little clock kind friend you do not know how much i prize thee timely treasure so dainty diligent and such a constant source of pleasure the man of brains who could invent so true a chronometer has set a charming precedent and made a good repeater it speaks with clear commanding clicks suggestive of the donor and tends to business never sick a bit more than the owner it goes when i do when i stop as by the dial showing it never lets a second drop but simply keeps on going it tells me when i am to eat which isn't necessary when food with me is obsolete i'll be a reliquary it tells me early when to rise and bother with dejeuner to sally forth and exercise and fill up my portemonnaie i hear it talking in the night as if it were in clover you've never lost your appetite you've never been run over it makes me wish that i might live more faithful unto duty and unto others something give like this bijou of beauty it holds its hands before its face so very modest is it so like the people in the place where i delight to visit sometimes i wonder if it cries the course i am pursuing because it has so many eyes and must know what i'm doing sometimes i fear it makes me cry no matter and no pity afraid at last i'll have to die in some far foreign city it travels with me everywhere and chirrups like a cricket as if it said with anxious air don't lose your tick tick ticket companion of my loneliness along my journey westward it never leaves me comfortless but has the last and best word i would not spoil its lovely face and so i go behind it and hold it like a china vase so careful when i wind it a clock is always excellent that has its label on and proves a fine advertisement for waterbury con those yankees ah they never shun a chance to make a dime and counterfeit the very sun in keeping standard time ah well the little clock has proved the best of all bonanzas and thus my happy heart is moved to these effusive stanzas end of poem this recording is in the public domain on bancroft height by hattie howard read for librivox dot org by melanie t on bancroft height aurora's face shines brighter than a star as stepping forth in dewy grace the gates of day unbar and lo the firmament the hills and the vales that intervene creation's self with gladness thrills to greet the matin queen on bancroft height the atmosphere is but an endless waft of life's elixir pure and clear as mortal ever quaffed and such the sweet salubrity of air and altitude is banished many a malady and suffering subdued on bancroft height the sunset glow when day departing dies outrivals all that tourist knows of famed italian skies and happy dwellers round about who view the scene aright in admiration grow devout and lord the lord of light round bancroft height rich memories commingle earth's affairs among the world's celebrities of him whose name it bears 
the scholar-wise compatriot who left to later men the grand achievements unforgot of that historic pen fair bancroft height revisited when all the land is white a halo crowns its noble head impelling fresh delight the daring wish in winter time the blizzard to defy those shining slippery slopes to climb up nearer to the sky though borearis abrade the cheek with bufferings of snow he gives a vigour that the weak and languid never know when with rejuvenescent frill like children everywhere bestirs the rhapsody the will to make a snowman there on bancroft height and bancroft tower such vistas charm the eye twere life's consummate glorious hour but to behold and die yet in the sparkle and the glow is earth so very fair the spirit lingers loath to go and dreams of heaven up there end of poem this recording is in the public domain. A Reformer by Hattie Howard Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T When I was young, my heart elate With ardent notions warm, I thirst to inaugurate A spirit of reform. The universe was all awry, Philosophy despite, a mundane thing's disjointed eye was bound to set aright. My mind conceived a million plans, for hope was brave and strong, but dared not with unaided hands combat a giant wrong. So with caress I sought to coax those who had humoured me, in infancy the dear old folks, and gain their sympathy. By quarrelling with extant laws they would have deemed a shame, who clung to error just because their fathers did the same. I sought in pleasure's gilded halls, where grace and beauty stirred, at revelries in perturous calls, to make my projects heard. Then turned to stately palaces of luxury and ease, where wealth's absorbing object was the master's whim to please and spoke of evils unredressed of danger yet to be they only answered like the rest but what is that to me and even pious devotees whom sacred walls immure condemned me as by feeble praise what more could i endure down by the stream so pure and clear that sunbeams pause to drink in loneliness and grief sincere I pressed its grassy brink. Thick darkness seemed to veil the day beyond a realm of tears. Utopia's land of promise lay, and not till later years. I learned this lesson that to win results from labour sure. Reformers always must begin among the lowly poor. For those whose lot privation is, and whose delights if you, whose aggregate of miseries is want of something new, the measures of whose happiness is but an empty cup, for every novelty will press, alert to fill it up. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Poems by Hattie Howard